all right good evening everyone this is JC the Guzman and I'm back for our daily top five gainers and top five losers analysis this video episode is for May 29 2019 in preparation for the next trading day I have some big announce I have a big announcement to make but I'll do that after by the end of the video so please finish watching or listening to this video till the end for today, I'll be talking about 7 DNL, Chelsea, Maxis, Green, BPI, ICT, SCC, LR, and PHA. Expect my technical analysis, overall sentiment, and uh, recommended trade setups, or recommendations simply, for these 10 stocks. I'd like to remind you, especially if you are a new subscriber, that everything that you're going to hear from me in this video is geared towards short-term trading only no long-term recommendation or piece of advice in this video all right let's begin with seven seven closed uh, today at 125.8 it managed to break above its previous resistance at 125.4 so it's acting uh, support now is at 125.4 while resistance is at 133 pesos per share just in case it won't manage to continue uh, its direction above uh, 125.8 and should it continue to go down or should it uh, choose to bounce away that will make 112.55 as its support level meanwhile for, for the meantime the support is again at 125.4 while resistance is at 133 please be advised that 7 uh, is already moving above the 10 SMA and MACD our MACD line has been moving above the signal line since May 14 therefore the conditions of my 10 SMA and MACD combo are now true they are now existing um, it's also I'm also glad to see that the positive DMA is already moving above the negative DMA and uh, the ADX puts 7 in a in a strong upward uh, direction in a strong category in, in terms of the upward ascent or yeah, upward direction of this stock okay let's see the RSI RSI still has some rooms to wiggle its way to wiggle sevens way towards the resistance at 133 but let's see let's see by the next trading day if uh, the traders are still have this bullish appetite to push the price closer to the resistance at 133 and we can tell if that's highly likely if that's more likely to con uh, to happen by taking a look at seven trade and volume distribution chart here you go the dominant range is between let's see the dominant range is between 120.1 to 121 so i'm not uh, overly I'm not too bullish on the trade and volume distribution chart of seven because of the distribution of its uh, trade and volume therefore my piece of advice for you if you have if you have had seven is to consider locking in some profits at 126 pesos per share only when it breaks above 126 with the towering volume at least equal to its uh, 10 day volume average and if the four points that we are always checking are present that's the only time that I suggest that you entertain the idea of doing a test buy but for now I I choose to be risk averse on the price action of seven based on how its trade and volume volume uh, were distributed we saw it I, sh I, sh I showed it to you a while back the trade and volume distribution chart so I am not too bullish on seven. My advice for those who have had seven is to lock in some profits at 126 pesos per share or anywhere close to that price. And if you are planning to trade seven, I suggest not to enter just yet. Before you do, before you entertain the idea of doing a test buy, please consider those uh, scenarios that I mentioned a few seconds ago. All right, moving on to DNL. DNL closed today at 10.4, support is at 9.93, resistance is at 10.4 itself. 
In other words, DNL is at the brink of crossing above its support level. The question now is that, is it more likely for the price to break above 10.4? We will find out. Uh, for the meantime, the price is moving above the 10 SMA and MACD. All right, it's moving above the signal line. On the DMA histogram, however, the positive DMI is yet to cross above the negative DMI. But if this ascent in price will continue, perhaps all the way until 10.8, we might see the positive DMI crossing above the negative DMI. When that happens, that's an additional point. That's, that's a point that adds up to, to my bullish conviction towards DNL, but only when that happens. Okay, we're just projecting. We are just making some data-driven projections right now. On the RSI, I am seeing that, that there's still more room for DNL to uh, walk towards its resistance if this uh, appetite to buy the stock up will continue. For investors, be mindful that they register the net foreign selling worth 22 million pesos today and they have been in let's see since when and they have been in a net foreign selling mode for 13 trading days straight take note of that please all right dnl let me show you the trading volume distribution chart the dominant range is between 10.4 10.28 all the way or 10.26 all the way to 10.42. That's in favor of the buyers. Therefore, we have some data-driven uh, basis to say that the ascendant price of DNL is more likely to continue. Just in case you were able to enter a new position on DNL today, just because the conditions of my 10 SMA and MACD combo have become true, please make sure that you know where your trailing stop loss is because it's not impossible for DNL to still become bearish despite the bullish conviction that we have produced based on our data-driven assessment today. Okay, take note of that. Take note of that possibility. Be on top of your trailing stop loss. Now, if you if you don't have DNL and you're at, you would like to ask me if it's, if it's uh, logical to enter a new position, yes, based on my data readings, it is logical to do a test buy on DNL. But don't, don't buy at any price. Make sure that you buy within the dominant range. That range that I've shown you a few seconds ago. All right. Next talk, we have Chelsea. I'm bullish on DNL, by the way. So Chelsea closed today at 6.75. Support is at 6.21. Resistance is pegged at 7.18. FYI, Chelsea con uh, continues to move above its 10 SMA. It got a bullish volume again today. Foreign investors net foreign buying worth 274,000 pesos is not that significant. But good news, MACD is still uh, moving in a bullish position. Since when? Since April 26. So if you caught Chelsea uh, in the last week of April, congratulations. If you are loyal to my 10 SMA and MACD combo, you should have made a fortune on Chelsea already. So just keep on adjusting your trailing stop loss so that you can maximize this bullish uh, stance of traders on Chelsea if you have it. If you have it, if you don't have Chelsea, I'm sure you'd like to ask, sir, am I too late? Is it still logical to enter a new position? Well, based on what transpired today, I think it is. But let's get a confirmation first by checking its trade and volume distribution chart. Oh yes, it is. All four points are present on Chelsea's chart as well. Why? This one will complete the, those four points. The dominant range is in favor of the buyers because it's closer to the intraday high than the intraday low. And that dominant range is between 6.7 to 6.7 to 6.8. Yeah, 6.7 to 6.8. Remember that range so if you're going to do a test buy do it within that range i'm still bullish on chelsea i don't see any signs uh, or formations of uh, a bearish convergence with any of these indicators yet the upward momentum remains in the very strong category based on the position of adx on the dmi histogram next talk in the list we have maxis maxis closed today at 13.08 support is at 11.84 Resistance is at 
FYI, it's still moving below. Okay, below. Below the 10 SMA, MACD is still moving below the signal line. It's not quite clear if MAC, the MACD's line has already bent towards the north uh, northward direction, but I don't think it is. In other words, we want to see MACSES registering two more, maybe one or more uh, green candlesticks for these uh, other oscillators to bend towards the northward direction. So I don't see strong um, signals yet to do uh, an entry on maxes. In other words, I'm still not that bullish. And in another word, in other words again, I'm still bearish on maxes despite the appearance of this green candlestick. Why, sir? It's already green candlestick with a strong volume. Why? So it's because the ten S the conditions of my 10 SMA and MACD combo are not uh, have not been met yet. Okay, they have not been met yet. But sir, is it possible to preempt? The conditions of your 10 SMA and MACD combo. Yes, you can if you are a high risk trader. Okay, but how? How? Check if the four points that we're checking are present. What are those four points? It should be a green candlestick. It should, uh, the last price should be higher than the VWAP. Volume should be at least 50%, uh, uh, higher than the 50% of the 10 day volume average. All of those three have been met, are present. Let's see the fourth one. Where will we find it? It's on the trade and volume distribution chart. Oh yes, all four points are present on Max's chart. The dominant range is between 13 to 13.1. It's in favor of the buyers. It's closer to the intraday high than the intraday low. That's what it means. So if you would like to preempt my the conditions of my 10 as the main MACD combo, then you can do so. But before you do that, make sure that you're happy with your reward to risk ratio before you do a test buy between 13 to 13.10. Sir, how do we calculate our reward to risk ratio? Please read the quick start guide. It's already written there. I have defined the terminology on that page. I've given you examples. I've shown you how to calculate your reward to risk ratio. Okay, just spend time rereading the quick start guide. All right, so that's it for Maxis. Next stock is green. Is this bullish? Let's see. Green closed today at 2.37. Support is at 2.25. Resistance is at 2.9. It managed to, to inch higher than its 10 SMA. All right. It's also moving above its VWAP of 2.34. Volume is bullish. Let's check MACD. All right. I'm seeing a cross above crossover. This is a golden cross on the MACD histogram. MACD is already moving above the signal line. Therefore, the conditions of my 10 SMA and MACD combo have, be, have been fulfilled, have been satisfied, have been met, whatever you want to call it. RSI still uh, has more room for green to, to dance towards its uh, sup, uh, resistance level on the DMI histogram. The bulls have not completely taken over of the scenario yet. I think once green breaks above uh, 2.5, that would be the time when the positive DMI will cross above the negative DMI. When that happens, I'll be all the more bullish on green. But let's see. On the trade and volume distribution chart, will it complete the four-point criteria? I think it did. It does. Because the dominant range is closer to the intraday high than the intraday low, and it's pegged between 2.3 to 2.87. All right, so I'm bullish on green still. You can still uh, do a test buy within the dominant range that I've shown you, and uh, yep, you can do that. Just make sure you know where where your trailing stop loss is, so that when things become sour on green's uh, price action, you're not clueless. You're not clueless on what you should do. Okay. All right, next, BPI. BPI, one of the top losers today. So it closed today at 77.3. Resistance is at 80.6. I had to plot a down Fibonacci retracement just to find where it's, uh, what do you call this, where it's uh, psychological uh, support is. And it's uh, in confluence with the 61.8% Fibonacci extension of the down Fibonacci at 66.4 that's your psychological support for BPI I don't need to mention that I'm bearish also 
I'm, the, the other indicators are telling us that they are bearish on BPI. Mac is bearish on BPI. What else? Um, oops, the downward momentum is so strong based on my readings on my DMI histogram. The downward momentum is so strong. It's all the more that you should not hurry in entering a new position on BPI. If you have a BPI for short-term trading purposes, you should have already executed your trailing stop loss several weeks, if not months ago. And if you're still carrying your BPI for short-term trading, I don't know. That I think that only means you disrespected your trailing stop loss. Okay. Again, don't set yourself up to, more, to a more frustrating than profitable experience. You have to follow the rules you have to uh, be loyal to your system to our processes so that you don't uh, so that you can minimize unbearable risks like this okay trade in volume distribution let me just show you this it's so in favor of the sellers the dominant range is between 77.3 to 78.4 it's all the more that you should not hurry in buying bpi all right don't buy bpi just yet it's still possible for possible for this stock to let's see this to test the support level at let me delete this one at 66.4 wow that's quite deep foreign investors registered a net foreign selling worth 112 million pesos today and they have been in a, in a net foreign selling mode on BPI for, let's count, for 16 trading days straight already. Okay, there you go. Next talk in the list, we have ICT. I'm, do, I need, do I still need to emphasize that I, was, that I am bearish on BPI? <laughs> All right, moving forward. ICT. ICT closed today at 134 pesos per share. Support is at 133.6 resistance is at 142 the major support is actually at 121.5 133.6 is a midterm support level so once ICT breaks below this midterm support level it's all the more that it would be more likely for the descent in price to continue towards 121.5 okay it's already moving below the 10 SMA and MACD is moving below the signal line okay that's not the buy signal that we we're expecting that's not the buy signal, FYI. Okay, let's check on the trade and volume distribution chart of ICT. Which one is the dominant range here? And it closed at 134 pesos per share today. Where, where is 134? It's, it's somewhere at the bottom. Close to the intraday low. Therefore, your dominant range here is at, one, is at 133.8 to 134. We have another dominant range between 135.5 to 133, 137.7, but I don't think that will materialize since uh, ICT closed today with a strong volume, almost 40%. Okay, it closed today closer to the intraday low, so it's in favor of the sellers. So what does that mean? Should you is it logical to top up if you have had ICT? I don't suggest topping up for now. Hold your position if you have ICT in your portfolio for short term trading purposes. And if you don't have it, don't buy ICT just yet for short term trading. Don't buy it yet. Wait for the appearance of you know wait for the 10 SME and MACD combo to be fulfilled and if you can't wait for it to be a confirmed buy signal with my 10 SM and MACD combo, you can preempt it once those four points become present. Do you think they are present now? No, they're not. Therefore, hold your, if you have ICT, again, hold your position, don't top up. Respect your trailing stop loss wherever it is. And if you don't have ICT, don't buy yet. Simple as that. Next, we have SCC Semirada closed today at 21.95, support is at 21.5, resistance is at 23.25 or 24. It's already moving below the 10 SMA. Alright, it's moving below the 10 SMA and it closed below its VWAP of 22.05. MACD, let's zoom, let's zoom this. 
MACD is still moving above the signal line. However, it has been, it's already downward sloping. One more red candlestick, one or two more red candlesticks, and it will register a death cross below the signal line. The D positive DMI is also downward sloping. One or two more red candlesticks, and we will see the positive DMI moving below the negative DMI. When that happens, it will be all the more that I should tell you to wait near 19.9. <laughs> okay, 19.9. So, well, before I give you my overall sentiment, let me give you the discuss the trade and volume distribution of SCC. It's in favor of the sellers. It's between 21.85 to 22 pesos per share. Again, it's in favor of the sellers today. So don't buy SCC yet. Don't hurry. And if you have it, let's say you you violated our rules here when we should do a test buy, you risk it. Please follow your trailing stop loss and don't top up yet. Might as well sell or respect your trailing stop loss wherever it is. And if you don't have SCC, good. Don't buy it yet. All right, until the buy until our buy signals appear. Leisure and Resort Leisure and Reserve Research World Corporation or LR closed today at 4.49, support is at 3.98, resistance is at 4.77. It already it's already moving below its 10 SMA and it closed today below its VWAP. MACD is already downward sloping, same with the positive DMI. RSI hit its uh, classical overbought uh, level uh, yesterday that's why selling sentiment uh, took over today all right see that it already hit its classical overbought level here so let's take a look at LR's trade and volume distribution it's clearly shown here that it's in favor of the sellers today the dominant range is between 4.49 to 4.6 all right if you bought LR when the conditions of my 10 SMA and MACD combo became true last May 7 or May 6, congratulations. You should have already made some fortune and recovered your subscription fee. <laughs> All right. Now, follow your trailing stop loss. Lock in your gains. Lock in your profits. Okay. Don't just rely on hope and prayer. You can hope and pray. Those, are, those two things are good, but don't use those two as your only barometer as to when you should hold your position hold your position if the price is still moving above your trailing stop loss otherwise sell there's no logical reason that i see why you should not sell once your trailing stop loss is hit all right so how about entering a new position do i recommend it no no why should i all right Enter a new position only once the, once those four points become present. They are absent. Okay, they did not go to school. <laughs> All right. Next, PHA. PHA closed today at 0 0.79. Support is at 0 0.59. Resistance is at 0 0.9. That's a lot, a lot of nines here. <laughs> a lot of that's of nines. Anyway. Uh, foreign investors sold a significant amount of, no, they did not sell, but they registered an, an, a net foreign selling worth 800,000 pesos today. And they have been in a net foreign selling mode for how many days? For four, oh no, not just four. Let's do that again. For one, two, three, four, five straight trading days. Nonetheless, their daily net foreign selling uh, amount uh, is an insignificant uh, value relative to the participation of these uh, foreign fundies with the index stocks. Of course, PHA is not an index company. Okay. All right. MACD is still moving below the signal line and PHA is already moving below its 10 SMA. Do I need to emphasize that the conditions of my 10 SMA and MACD combo are not true, are not present yet? They're not present yet. And the bears are still in control. The bears are still in control, but the, the downward momentum is not that strong. Simply because PHA is uh, uh, moving up and down, up today, down tomorrow, down tomorrow again, and up again. So nonetheless, I think uh, PHA will just uh, trade the range between 0 0.59 to 0 0.9 unless uh, uh, a very strong bullish volume will... Uh, up um, in the coming trading days okay 
Let's take a look at PHA's trade and volume distribution chart. It's in favor of the sellers again. The, the, domin the dominant range has been 0 0.79 to 0 0.81 in favor of the sellers, like what I've said. So don't buy PHA just yet, okay? Don't enter a new position. And I, I, did not, I don't think there's a reason why you should have PHA. Since when? Since it registered a downtrend uh, in the last week of January this year. Okay, you should have already locked in your gains uh, when it was moving above 1.25. But right now, I don't think it. M I don't. I don't understand. If you have PHA, if you bought PHA uh, between 0 0.9 to 1.25, I don't understand why you did so because there were no buy signals when the price was moving between that uh, between that range. Okay. Alright, so I'm bearish on PHA. Don't enter a new position yet. Alright, so you've heard my technical analysis, overall sentiment, and recommendations for these 10 stocks for today in preparation for, guess what, of course, the next trading day. And what is the announcement that I, that I wanted to, that I've been wanting to share with you? Today, I have launched the uh, affiliate, uh, the referral incentive program of Equalist Analytics. So here. Okay, when you log in, you can see here. So what's this refer referral incentive program? Those of you who have been members or subscribers of Equilist Analytics for at least at least six months, there's criteria, okay? For at least six months, you can apply as an affiliate of Equilist Analytics. What gives? Okay, that's the question. What gives, Jay-Z, if I become an affiliate marketer or an affiliate or uh, partner of Equilist Analytics. For every successful referral that you will give to Equilist Analytics, I will give you your cut. I will give you 20% of the total sales. So if someone subscribes for six months or one year for an X number of amount, you will get 20% of that amount. Okay, 20% commission. So instead of you telling your friends, hey friends, I'm going to subscribe to Equilist Analytics, then I'm going to let you access my account for free. Instead of doing that, you can tell them the benefits, tell them the reasons why you love Equilist Analytics, and then let them subscribe using your affiliate URL. In that case, you are helping them become uh, better uh, short-term traders and better long-term investors. Uh, while you are getting, uh, while you're generating passive income as well as an affiliate. So that's 20%. Okay. That, this is my way of uh, sharing. Uh, this is my, this is the company's uh, profit sharing program with its customers with you. Okay. That's my way of saying thank you. I'm going to give you 20% commission for every successful referral. But there are, again, criteria for that. Not every subscriber is qualified. You have to be a subscriber, a member for at least six months. Why Jay-Z? Why six months? Why not as soon as I become your subscriber? Why uh, why don't you make me qualified automatically? It's self-explanatory. How can you de defend, describe, explain the world of Equilist Analytics like how I explain it with angst, certainty, certainty and conviction? If you have not adapted yet to what I'm to what I've been teaching you if you don't understand yet very clearly why I do what I do and how I do it how can you explain it properly with the intensity that I have with the other subscribe with the, with the potential subscribers so you have to marinate yourself first your mind your processes the way you think for at least six months okay so there you go. So those who have been subscribers of Equilist Analytics for about six months or so, take advantage of this. Help me grow the business. I'll give you a cut, 20% straight, subject to terms and conditions. And it's all the terms and conditions are, are listed on, uh, on the affiliate income tab right here. All right. And if you have questions, please uh, don't hesitate to send me an email or ask in our private clients forum and then I'll, I'll get back to you. And this video of the top five gainers and top five losers uh, analysis will be posted in the short-term trading tab shortly. 
Again, my name is JC De Guzman. May I do hope I was able to help you uh, trade responsibly and independently. Have a good day.